Hey, hey, everybody, Kevin here with Pursuing Pixels, and welcome back to another edition of Save It for the Cast. And as per usual, you know the drill by now. I'm going to be kicking the ball over to John Randall and I in a little bit after I talk about some of the stuff that I've been playing lately. As far as when we get to the chit chat with John Randall and I, we're going to be talking about some uh, 3D movement and video games kind of all over the map. John uh, kind of kicks us off with a little Monster Hunter World, and then we start talking about some Boomerang X, some Super Mario Odyssey a short hike. We kind of go all over the map as far as like 3D platformers. Obviously, not, obviously Monster Hunter is not necessarily a 3D platformer, but the way John plays it, maybe it is. Um, but anyways, we'll get to that in just a little bit here. And all over, we talk a little bit of other stuff too. But yeah, that's kind of the main focus of the conversation coming up here. Uh, but yeah, some of the stuff that I've been playing lately, I've been trying to get back into the swing of things with my uh, live streaming. I haven't quite gotten into any kind of routine with it. And I don't know that I will necessarily be like, hey, every Monday at five, I'm jumping on. But like, I want to try to hop on at least once a week and play a couple games, if not a little more than that. Uh, so I'm going to try to post in the Discord or uh, elsewhere when I'm hopping on live, probably on relatively short notice. So just stay tuned if you want to try to catch things live, but I'm just going to try to hop on when I'm, you know, feeling good enough when I have the time away from work. I'm sure I've mentioned this before. Um, and I even cut the stream short the other day. I was planning on playing a few more games or at least one more game, but, uh, my back was kind of killing me. So I only ended up playing two, but man, did I have a good time playing both of those games. And the first one that I played was this game called Proto Corgi. Uh, I was sitting on my switch, uh, wish list for quite some time. Uh, thanks to, I'm pretty sure it was our pal space spy, uh, the developer of the game Eggly. And if it wasn't them, I apologize uh, <laughs> to whoever recommended this game to me. But whoever it was, uh, and I had actually seen it before. It was already, I think, maybe even on my wish list. But I was like, okay, I probably should just snag this. It's only $8, I think, full price. But it was on sale for two oh nine or something like that. So I was like, you know what? I finally need to spring for this. And I even was second guessing it because I was looking at the screenshots on the eShop. They didn't have a trailer. Uh, so I was like, you know, and it looks cute and everything. I really like the pixel art. But I was like, you know, without hearing you know some of the music or seeing the game in action I was a little bit reluctant so I actually did go to YouTube and watch a trailer even though I already had a recommendation from a fellow <laughs> game I shouldn't say a fellow game dev like I'm a game dev although I guess I've kind of minorly worked on the music of a <laughs> prototype video game before but uh yeah that's stretching it to uh to say the least but uh anyways uh yeah I decided to watch the trailer and man the music really started kicking right from the stretch and seeing all the explosions and this is like a pretty much a bullet hell shoot em up I guess queued them up in this case, uh, being that you play as like a robotic corgi. Um, and it's a really, really tough game, a lot tougher than I was expecting, uh, even after watching the trailer. Um, and the trailer really kind of sold me. There was actually a second one that showed all these special features, like you can create your own levels, which is not something I ever get into. But in the off chance that like I really get hooked on this game, it's like, well, there's like online, you know, created levels. And even on the Switch version, it seemed like I could, you know, access that stuff. I really didn't dive into it too much. Uh, but there's like a full blown campaign. You play as this robotic, adorable Corgi dog. Uh, it's got an amazing soundtrack, kind of like a Sega era or Dreamcast era, I guess I should say, uh, inspired soundtrack. There's a little bit of vocals, at least on the opening, like intro track, a really great opening kind of anime esque uh, cut scene, which doesn't always do it for me. But in this one, it just really hit the mark. Um I don't know. I just really had an absolute blast with this game. The way the pre just everything about the presentation, like the very first, I guess maybe it's actually the second kind of mini boss. Maybe it's a regular boss. I don't know that you fight, but like you get to like this stage where you're like almost defeating it. And then it gets to the last phase and it goes into like this black and red one bit pixel style where it's like almost like, you know, the warning lights are not necessarily flashing, but I mean, it's a really visually stunning game. Uh, obviously you got to love that kind of 16 bit pixel art style, almost 32 bit style. Uh, but it's just such a cool, charming game with so much energy, both in the gameplay and in the, uh, um, presentation more primarily in the presentation. The gameplay is relatively straightforward. I mean, you got a button on the shoulder where you can slow down, uh, which I really like that there's kind of like an independent button for that. I like when games utilize the, you know, you move a little bit slower when you're holding down the fire button. Um, you can also rapidly tap the fire button to do like a bark attack, which is like more for cuteness, I think, than anything. Although I do think it is a little bit more powerful than just holding down uh, fire, you know, rapidly. But you can also pick up like a ton of different buffs and power ups and shields and various things. It was just such a cool game. I, I didn't come anywhere near beating it. It seems like as I kind of grind away, I'm unlocking like extra continues it's not like a roguelike or roguelite in any way other than i'm like yeah unlocking an extra continue or an extra 
like life per run or something like that, but it is really, really tough. I'm playing on the second easiest difficulty, which was the default, um, but there were, I think, two tougher difficulties and even more that you could unlock. I think in that one like feature trailer I watched, it said there were like nine difficulty levels, so this game is not messing around in the difficulty department. And then the game that I played right after that was this game called 10, and then I think there's like a subtitle for it. When I On the Switch eShop, it's just called 10, all caps, T-E-N, uh, but I think it's called like 10 rooms, 10 floors, 10 seconds or something like that, and that's very literally what this game is. And uh, this is another game that I thought was going to be a roguelike or roguelite uh, kind of experience, just seeing the presentation being like a one bit with a little bit of splash of color here and there, but like a one bit uh, arcadey single screen arcade thing. I was like, okay, this, this is going to be a roguelike procedurally generated thing, but that doesn't seem to be the case. You're actually uh, going through these like basically 10 floors that you have to survive 10 rooms in a row. And then in each room, you have to survive for 10 seconds. And there's a, you know, a, any number of challenges. Most of the time, it's just kind of like a you know, it's a side scrolling platformer where like the um, controls feel so very similar to N plus or just the N series. If anybody remembers those games, which I'm sure you do, it's a, it was a pretty prop, pretty popular uh, indie game series in the early days, like in the Xbox Live Arcade days, I feel like is when it got its start. Uh, but, you know, lived on, you can even get the N plus plus or whatever collection on Switch, which I still need to grab, actually. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, the just movement reminds me a lot of those games just in how high you jump, but you unlock new abilities kind of in that roguelike road roguelite yeah, fashion where you're like buying unlockables with the coins you grab on each run because uh, you are dying a ton and retrying like you have to beat the whole floor to clear it. And there's a boss stage where you actually have to survive 30 seconds at the end of each uh floor which those are actually probably the most fun out of everything but this is another game where the soundtrack is just absolutely slamming and I really love that they kind of lean away from the chiptune side of things even though it's like a fully retro like one bit style uh, presentation visually they really lean into like this kind of like jazzy melodic metally guitar chugging like but like kind of chill at times I don't know it's just got a really really cool uh, presentation across the board I really love when you get to the next floor the way it like kind of shows like a quote-unquote world map with like an elevator that shows what floor you're on and even like reverses whether you're running to the right or left based on like where you know what way the elevators are laid it makes sense when you're <laughs> looking at it visually it's kind of hard to explain um but yeah, I just really had a f ton of fun with that game. Kind of plays like a bullet hell dodge em up, essentially. Um, and you're just trying to survive for as long as you can. You might be trying to defuse all the bombs on a stage before the time runs out or just dodge a bunch of saw blades and uh, turrets that are, you know, chasing you down and firing projectiles at you left and right or just, you know, going back and forth on timers and, you know, just trying to throw off your timing. And it's just it gets I don't know. I just really had a ton of fun going after it like you know, even though it isn't procedurally generated, that was actually a part of the fun was like try it and part of the frustration, too. But like even there were just so many cool elements were like on a given, you know, run of a floor. And every time you get to a new floor, that's like a checkpoint. Um, so you don't have to beat the whole game in one run or anything like that. Just one floor at a time. But like if you get through like five of the floors, you can actually run back through the floors you've cleared and like grab a slice of pizza that'll refill your health uh, right at the beginning where you start at. So it's like, ah, do I really feel like running all the way back or I've, I've lost two of my four hearts? Like, should I wait and chance it that I, you know, won't get hit two times in the next room? Like, I don't know. I'm just really having a ton of fun with that game and really looking forward to playing some more. And then I did actually want to give a quick shout out to the uh, Mario versus Donkey Kong demo, which I played earlier today and pretty much had no interest in picking up this game when they announced it. I actually thought that they were like remaking the Donkey Kong 94 Game Boy game for some reason. And then I was like, oh, they're just remaking the Game Boy Advance game, which to be fair, I never really played. Uh, I think I had played like a demo for one of the DS versions that used like a lot more of the touch controls and it was like a little more puzzle and guiding those little mini uh, Mario's around where this is kind of plays more similarly to the Donkey Kong 94 gameplay at least in this demo they let you play stage one three and five and then like the kind of mini boss stage where you do have to the one stage where you did have to kind of guide those mini Mario's that you've rescued so far but like I went from being pretty uninterested in this game to playing the demo and then it shows like a little trailer at the end of like oh man there's gonna be you know 130 stages and that's one thing I wish they would have let me play one of the boss battles because they showed some of those and I was like these look really fun um, but nonetheless, I really thought the level design was awesome. Uh, took just like a little bit of getting used to that, like stiffer feel of the gameplay, but like it has that, 
I don't know. I, I was just really getting excited by it. I don't think it'll be one that I'll grab day one for 50 bucks, even though I'm glad it's not like a full $60 uh, price tag game, but it's one that I'll probably throw in the Amazon cart and wait for it to be 30 or 40 and snag it. But yeah, like I said, I went from being pretty uninterested. I really love the presentation. I was worried that it was going to have that like too clean of a look. Like it looked almost too sterile uh, seeing it in the trailers and stuff, but playing it in action, it actually looks really great. Um, like it looked like the backgrounds were just going to be like kind of generic and stuff. And in some ways it kind of is, but I don't know. I, I was really <laughs> pleasantly surprised by that. So I'm looking forward to, uh, possibly picking that up in the future and definitely recommend, uh, checking the demo out, uh, for that one. If you were maybe on the fence as well. Uh, but I think I've done enough, uh, rambling at this point and I think I can kick things over to, uh, John Randall and I, so we can, uh, yeah, talk about, uh, <laughs> launching ourselves all over the place in, uh, 3d platformers and other uh other types of video games and a little other stuff uh as well but yeah i'll leave it there for the uh rambling at the intro here and uh kick it over to john randall and i (laughs) which i've already said and uh until next week we'll catch you then and take care actually seems like a good timing wise like give people another year to chew on world and whatever oh yeah and rise yeah didn't they release world 2 or is that the one that's coming out or is it Uh, just a new monster hunter in general no i'm playing an old one and it's just every every monster hunter still has a loyal fan base that plays it regularly i can for sure see that everybody has their own one that they like like, the one that yeah yeah this is the one that did everything right they fucked it up with everyone after this like they added too much bullshit (laughs) and it's like this was the worm series circa about 20 years ago too yeah same same (laughs) shit yeah yeah. absolutely yeah god yeah, God. But talk about not. a series that is totally irrelevant at this point. Oh, much, big except, time has except, been for a decade at least, probably yeah, two. But those yeah. were such classics, man. Yeah, but it was yeah. the same deal. Like uh, Worms Armageddon, they fucked it up with Worms World Party, and then the Worms World Party people could say the same thing about the next one. And yeah, oh yeah, 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 that's true. <laughs> but Rise's Wire Bugs is just the one of the best like movement mechanics in any game. It's just a like a grappling hook that can launch you just into midair doesn't need to be attached to anything Mm. and it's like oh you can do two of those in a row oh yeah just 300 like complete uh, like any point in space you can living in the air yeah yeah 3d land yeah Especially yeah, like for insect glaive, which I've showed you is just like pole vaulting. Yes. So like oh it's really a thing that I never really had to deal with because I always played low bow and we need to log off. Uh <laughs> light bow gun, like yeah, I'm far away from everyone, I'm not engaged in it, but like you can interrupt other people's attacks. And so like you like there's technically kind of not friendly fire, but friendly interruption. So, like, if you're, like, right next to another person, you're going to clang off of them and not attack the monster. So you need to position yourself far away. Or, if you're an insect glaive person like me, be like, peace, I'm just going to be bouncing around above all you guys. You guys can have fun on the ground. (laughs) Yeah. That's actually really cool, though. It's like so it doesn't good. do damage, but it, it doesn't interrupt to their like animation at that. It point. might do like, like a single point of damage oh. <laughs> because that's also how you can attack your uh, teammates if they are stunned to get them out or if they're asleep oh, okay. to get them out of stun or that's sleep. Cool. It's great. I like it. <laughs> well, I like what, it. What Just you talking about that like uh, grappling hook or whatever. I wonder if you would like that boomerang X game. Mm. as well I, that I talked about briefly that I picked up recently like you th- basically it's just a first person like kind of arena shooter that you throw a boomerang and then you can press a button again to teleport to where you threw your Ooh, boomerang to such a good design man and it is Cappy, a crazy feeling game man Cappy in uh Mario Odyssey what a good oh what a great yeah. mechanic I love it yeah. Yeah, I love oh, man. that. Just launching around with that, like oh, yeah. horizontal Having 3D it, space. Let me putting it in a like holding it so that it's like a point in front of you, and then diving yeah. into that and doing using the long that as a, jump into a platform. It. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love movement mechanics. I just yes. love 
launching myself across the screen. <laughs> God, there's a whole another conversation off of that for sure of like how well the game industry has done with that sort of stuff in 3D space. Oh, yeah. lately, even over the last even five little, years, even little Gator game is nailing that. Just the sense of like movement. You get like a T-shirt that you can like paraglide with. It's freaking amazing. I've been playing a lot of a short hike, too. And man. Yeah. What a fucking great game that controls he, like it's he oh, just geez. released. He he just took it down, but he released a mod for short hike 99 where people could log on and like literally play the game. He, he was talking about he was like, I just guided someone through the entire game for the first time. Uh, but he was like, OK, the joke's over. I'm taking this down. <laughs> oh, that would be so fun. Though. Or whatever, whatever he said. You know, he's like, it's just too broken or whatever. Oh, yeah. Like it, there were, I just if you look at it, uh, their feet on like Twitter or whatever, like I was looking at it and he was like the physics. The or the boat being a physics object wasn't a problem in single player mode. <laughs> and people are just like catapulting off of it and turning it into like a trampoline. Welcome Whoa. to video games. Yeah, yeah it's oh, pretty. It, it looked pretty great. It looked pretty great. <laughs> that's but yeah, awesome. what a great game. I've I, that's on Game Pass too, and I've been thinking about because that's one where I'm like, I, I, I know there's physical copies out there. Maybe I need to just spring. Oh, I definitely grab get that. It. I own it on I own it on itch or something. I can't remember where I own it, but. I want to own it on another platform where I can play it more easily. Yes. Mm-hmm. But cool. that's going to be in a museum one day. Yeah. That game is seriously a all time, all it is. time classic. And I'm not kidding around at least early impressions. Little Gator game is like right freaking tippy top up there in the charm. If not outdoing it so far. Man, man, man. All right. Cause so I was, I'm I was when I was more. replaying a short hike, I was like, God damn, this is written so well. This it's, is it's so in, it's, it might be perfect. It's it's. I gotta play great. that one again. I gotta play that one again. Maybe especially like when you to talk back. to NPCs multiple times in a row. Just like oh <laughs> yeah, they're like one of the first ones is like giving you a uh, like a tutorial on button what buttons do what, and then like by the third time that you're asking them, like they're like no 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 <laughs> no no. I told you <laughs> no. <laughs> and I'm like yeah, yeah this I game love- rules. My, yeah, my wits end just, with you. I love when there's Enough. just good, good writing at like perfect timing like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even Zelda, um, what was the first one? Was it not Spirit Tracks? Uh, Phantom, Phantom Hourglass. Hourglass. I remember the very first one, like when I, when I got into the first dungeon, I'm like doing my little stylus running around. And then there's just like this one, you're talking about these like ghosts in the dungeon. You can like go up to the skeletons and talk to them. And they're the one of the ones that you talk to eventually is just like, I bet you wish you had a D pad right now or something like that. <laughs> I was like, "Fuck you, man!" And I, because I was just thinking, like, "Man, this game's cool," but I wish, I wish it had the regular Zelda controls. And I was just like, "Whatever." I like that they like kind of tease you a little bit about it and say, "It's so funny." Fuck you. We wanted to make it this way. Absolutely. And too bad, you know. You yep. like it or not, we made it this way. This is Nintendo. Yeah. We're gonna ham fist this thing that we <laughs> launched this console with. God damn it. <laughs> Man, I, I was uh, drawing yeah. the GameCube controller layout from memory for some reason, and then yeah. I was like, "That can't be right." Like that's it just, is that's a, that's absurd. all these amorphous blobs, and like the X is to the right of the A button. And I'm like, "What are you doing, Nintendo? What like why? Why do you? It's have a to little make... bean on the side. It's Whoa. nice. You just you just shift your thumb a little bit. It's nice. What a, the A B <laughs> is nice, but I will a and say B those... is nice." And those Y buttons. is nice, but X just doesn't make sense. <laughs> something something about those GameCube and 64 controllers, though, it felt like those buttons just would, like, stick. Like, the B, the A, like, I, those are the only controllers the I've ever had where, like, bit. the buttons yeah, got, it. like, real flimsy. Like, I can't, like, push the buttons solidly anymore. All my other controllers, even my, like, Super Nintendo ones that I've had for probably a decade longer, you know. That one little button. Maybe it's all the Mario the little button on top of the GameCube controller on oh, the right Z. side that they add at the yeah, last the second. Z. Yeah, that that one was felt real real weird too comparatively. Yeah, yeah. I yeah feel it only like, ever worked if it was just like to open a menu or talk yeah. or something. Yeah, the yeah. soft like press of the shoulder buttons. I always kind of felt like that spring wore out pretty quick. Yeah, that makes it sense. felt it felt nice when it was fresh, but yeah, it did get flimsy too. Yeah, but man, nothing beats the cheapo. Uh, joystick of the n64 <laughs> like yeah i have some that like just are broken like just like yeah the, you just, just like the, w- like the move yes and it's like tump to like tipping side to side yeah yeah yep, yep, yep. oh Terrible. yeah so flimsy mm-hmm. paper mache controllers
and I, I, I know you mentioned you played a little Bleak Sword, plus there's that Apple oh, Arcade yeah. connection. Yeah. Uh, I was playing a little bit of that today. I was just going to kind of give a shout out to that little Gator game, and if we needed padding, I could talk a little er, first impressions of Cocoon as Ooh. well, but I don't need to talk about that. But Cocoon is freaking sweet. I'll just talk about it right now for five seconds. Yeah. Um, it's I didn't know it was developed. I just watched the trailer again and I and then I watched like a quick like one minute review. I didn't know it was developed by the lead like designer of Limbo and Inside. Yeah, okay. I didn't know that either. Which you wouldn't know from playing it because like those games are they're cool for what they are. But like it's kind of just trial and error. Push up again. Like try it, die, try it again and figure it out. It's like yeah. um, Inside was a little more puzzly, but yeah. like yeah, this was more like it just drops you in. It's kind of like Death's Door Tunic style, more like Tunic. There's like no words, no dialogue or anything. And you just like it's pretty much a single button from everything I can tell so far. And basically, like you pick up this orb that's like powers everything and you like th- throw that onto like these pedestals and it powers up these little puzzle solving things. so You can navigate the little world map and then eventually you get to this like little like pond thing. You throw it on the pedestal and then you can like hold down a and you like dive into that like orb that you were holding and then you go in that's like a level or like another world that you're in and i watched the trailer and it looks like you're like literally picking up like five six different ones of those and like diving in and in like kind of like nesting doll style nice Nice. and then like i got to this one boss battle and like it seemed like it was gonna be like one hit death kind of situation like up to this point there was no combat or anything and it was just like me dodging this boss and then it just like grabbed me and then like whipped me out of the orb, like and back into the overworld. It was like <laughs> the coolest fucking transition I've ever seen in a video game. Like That's I was awesome. seriously, and it was one of the first things I played after like getting my TV hooked up. And I was just like, oh, nice. fuck yeah, it feels so <laughs> good, man. Game Pass, uh, right? Yeah, it's on Game Pass. Yeah. yeah, That's where I fired it up because I saw it on my Switch wish list. And I was like, oh man, I should pick this up because it was on sale for like a 10 or 20% off. And I was like, oh, it's on Game Pass. Let me check this out. So... Annapurna. Nevertheless, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I didn't know it was Annapurna either. So, man, God, it's it is freaking sweet. I really want to play more of that game. It seems really, really well done. It looks nice, nice too. Yeah, and the review said it was like four or five hours. So I was like, Ooh. perfect. 